In the afternoon of May 20th, 1978, NASA launched Pioneer Venus 1, also known as the Pioneer Venus Orbiter, on top of an Atlas Centaur rocket. The purpose of Pioneer Venus 1 was to get into orbit around Venus in preparation for Pioneer Venus 2, the Pioneer Venus Multiprobe that would send four probes into the atmosphere of Venus. Up to this point, the United States had only sent flyby missions to Venus. There had been three of them, Mariner 2, Mariner 5, and Mariner 10. By contrast, the Soviet Union seemed obsessed with Venus ever since their first attempt at a flyby launch in 1961. The Soviets had racked up 22 Venus launch attempts and seven successes. All of the successes came from the Venera program, which included five successful landers, two atmospheric probes, and two orbiters that had been paired with the landers on Venera 9 and Venera 10. The Russians were the first to transmit data from the surface of another planet in uh, 1970, and the first to transmit images from the surface of another planet in 1975. So, while the United States was clearly taking the lead in the exploration of the outer planets, there was still some catching up to do when it came to Venus and Mars, and so here we have the Pioneer Venus 1 being prepared for its trip to Venus, and there still is some catching up by the way. The United States still has not deliberately landed something on Venus. So anyway, here is the packaging of the probe and its fairings, and let's head on over to the launch. Here we go. Very little video was available of the launch and no audio was available, so here I go with my own devices. TMS 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, and launch. Launch of the Pioneer Venus 1 aboard the Atlas Centaur SLV 3D on May 20th, 1978. At this point, of course, the Atlas rocket is firing three engines at the core engine, which is an LR 105, and then two booster engines, which are LR 89s. The LR-89s are producing a combined 1,896 kilonewtons, whereas the center engine is only producing 386 kilonewtons, but it will sustain the, the rocket through the middle altitudes. After that, the Centaur stage will take over. The booster engines have low ISP, low efficiency, but they have that huge thrust to get the rocket off the ground in a hurry and of course get it to the thinner parts of the atmosphere which we see here. The Atlas has a core diameter of 3.05 meters. At launch it was 148.4 tons. Almost all of that tonnage was fuel of course. In order to get a half ton payload to Venus, the Pioneer Venus 1 was 517 kilograms at launch. Here we have booster separation and now only the single core engine is running. Again, 386 kilonewtons to LR 105-5, ISP in vacuum 316. It continued to burn uh, itself out using kerosene and liquid oxygen, preparing for the Centaur stage, the two RL-10A3s, which are highly efficient and burn liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. This launch, of course, occurred out of Cape Canaveral. The Pioneer Venus multiprobe, the Pioneer Venus 2, if you will, uh, would occur in August, so a big gap between this launch and that one. Uh, this Pioneer Venus 1 would not actually reach Venus until October, so they wouldn't actually know whether this one had succeeded uh, before launching the Pioneer Venus multiprobe. Okay, the first stage, the Core Atlas stage about to run out here, having boosted the Centaur stage to a fairly high altitude, and hopefully the Centaur stage will be able to carry the payload the rest of the way. Okay, that's first stage out, first stage separation, and that is the two RL-10s lit, burning liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Total delta V for the Centaur stage here, based on this payload, was about 7,000 meters per second. And it would use about half of that in order to complete orbit, and then the other half in order to boost to Venus. 
The ideal Venus transfer is actually take into account where the ascending and descending nodes of the orbits are uh, to avoid having to make an undo uh, mid-course plane change, which can be very costly in this case because you're going closer in towards the sun. There are a lot of uh, details that I didn't have access to regarding this mission, including what the initial orbit for this mission was, uh, what orbit the centaur stage actually put the mission into, and here we'll see the center stage complete that orbit there, but uh, I put it into a relatively low orbit in preparation for the transfer. Here I'm turning the craft to its proper orientation for the transfer to Venus, there ought to be little thrusters on the centaur stage in order to provide for this turn. And then finally, of course, we have to dump the payload fairings. I didn't have the little nose cone thrusters action group, so it didn't uh, fall away properly. Anyway, uh, here we go for the start of the transfer burn. And this would not take long because the centaur stage had already uh, burned a lot of its fuel. And the remaining Delta V actually was contained in uh, only a small portion of the remaining fuel in the stage. And so the burn time for this was about a minute and a half. A few more words about the Pioneer Venus 1 as it gets to escape trajectory here. Its diameter was 2.5 meters, fairly large, and it was a cylinder. As you can see, a fairly, fairly uh, standard shape, uh, unusually enough. Uh, length of 1.2 meters, at the top covered in gold foil. And at its base, uh, saw a rocket booster, the Star 24, which would get into orbit around Venus. And here we see payload separation after the Centaur stage has completed its job. Uh, you can see the antenna poking up there, a one, one meter dish or so. And as we see it approach Venus, I have to disclose that I did use HyperEdit to get into this trajectory. Unfortunately, even though the initial burn was fine, um, subsequently, there had to be an onerous mid-course plane change, which this probe simply didn't have fuel for. NASA, of course, had the, had the trajectories working out for them, and they figured out how to do it without making uh, expensive mid-course plane change. Anyway, so uh, here the probe is getting ready to uh, orient itself properly to fire its SRB to get into orbit around Venus. So again, no error braking. It's using thrust to do it. And I'm not entirely sure what the fuel for the thrusters for the probe is. There's a lot of details about this mission that I wasn't sure about. Anyway, this is the first image transmitted from Pioneer as it approached Venus. And yeah, uh, one thing to note is that I didn't have the clouds configured. So what you're seeing is actually the image of Venus's surface, which is, uh, as is well known, quite hellish, uh, very hot and sulfuric acid all over the place and that sort of thing. So here we go, our probe is approaching it. Uh, a little bit high compared to the actual tra trajectory of the orbiter in real life. Unfortunately, uh, for some reason my, my SRB decided to start this thing spinning and the RCS did not have the ability to counteract that. In real life, this did not happen. In real life, NASA fire the SRB just fine, 30 seconds, 20 kilonewtons of thrust, and that got it into a, a very elliptical orbit around Venus. I don't know why I had this problem, maybe it was an imbalance in all the instruments that this thing carries. In real life, the instruments were a surface radar mapper, IR, UV, mass spectrometers, solar wind plasma analyzer, magnetometer, electric field detector, atmospheric drag experiment, solar wind turbulence experiment, gamma ray burst detector, and many others. So quite a lot of experiments packed into this little vehicle. Um, but, uh, well, anyway, I ended up in an escape trajectory, and that was that. In real life, of course, this did not happen. In real life, the orbiter got into a nice 24-hour orbit, uh, for the convenience of the researchers, by the way. They deliberately made a 24-hour orbit. Uh, the periapsis was held between 142 to 253 kilometers using the fuel on board and you can see the sort of orbit there and the apoapsis at 66,000 kilometers. Once it started to run out of fuel its periapsis was raised to 2,290 kilometers to conserve fuel but eventually as its replacement the Magellan orbiter, a Venus mapping orbiter, 
arrived in 1992, they decided to use the remaining fuel on board to deorbit the the Pioneer Venus 1. And so it met its demise in the atmosphere of Venus in 1992 after completing a 14-year mission. And so that was real life. That is not going to happen with my little probe. And I have to work on my skills in space to prevent this from happening again. But anyway, thank you for watching Today in Space History for May 20th. Coverage of the Pioneer Venus 1 probe, which was launched in 1978. Special thanks to Frizank for the Atlas Centaur rocket used in this video. And we'll see you next time.